right, it is back, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise, and please welcome your host and moderator here at Build, Lee Blickley, and today's guests, Hayden Pettitieri and Charles Eston. <laughs> Welcome to Build. We're so happy to have Hi you guys. here. Thank you. Hello, everybody. All your fans. Wow, that was a deep, heavy clip we just saw there. Um, we were back. Whoa. I was getting choked up at right? the curtain back there. Did anyone else get the chills while thing. watching that? Um, and how many of you are so, so excited that Nashville is back? I know we have some huge fans. Look at this. All thanks to you guys. Um, Thank you for re-employing us. <laughs> Uh, let's kind of go back to that, you know, the cancellation and the fans' reaction and how that felt for you guys to see all these people come out and, and support the show and beg for it to come back. Well, for me, um, I've never had a show that lasted four seasons. <laughs> so, uh, and I've been doing this a long time, so my first emotion was gratitude for what we'd had before and, and the things we'd gotten to do on the show Nashville, but I didn't feel like we were done at all. And then immediately, I mean literally immediately, the second it came up on the internet, they started forming uh, petitions and hashtags, and, and they got to show the love that they've shared with us on social media for all four years of this show. Um, and that they get to share live at concerts whenever we're out and playing. They shared right there in a very organized and dedicated way. And uh, they are literally, CMT will tell you, they're literally why we're back. So uh, this, this season's for you, that's for sure. I mean, we never, got, we never get to see that kind of stuff. And that's what's so powerful about what y'all did is that, you know, we get to stand in front of a camera and memorize our lines and, and do our jobs and, and we hope and pray that you guys like it, but we never actually get to feel that energy until you guys brought us back from the dead. Yeah, I mean, we the, felt this it. was a cliffhanger was in the show and about the show. And we thought we thought we were done, but it didn't feel like we were finished. Um, and so to get this other chance, we knew what we had was special, but those days back when we all first saw each other on the set, and it was like, here we are, <laughs> let's go make some more of this. And plus we're on a new network and with new showrunners. So that means that it's not like some just tacked on added season. It's something real special about it. You can see already in these scenes, there's something real filmic that we started out with on Nashville. I think we're getting back to, and I love it. Well, you don't take it for granted. I think, I think after, you know, four years, it's 10 months out of the year that we film and when we it just reignited us and um, brought us back together and we just put that much more effort and energy and love into what we and into our performances because it's pretty amazing I'm a huge Nashville fan and after that final episode I was like how can they end on this they can't do this to us there's so much like mm -hmm. left Open and Hayden backstage, you were saying the last show you were on also did something yeah. like that. This would have been the second show. I mean, the last show I did, Heroes, the, the last thing you saw was me throwing myself off of a Ferris wheel. And, and the fans were upset with me. They were like, well, how could you do I, that? I sort of house? held that against I you, was too. Like, <laughs> of course you did. You know, well, um, yeah, I mean, so you'd been there, but... Um, I, this is so seldom that we get to do this. I know. It's, it's, it's what's so special about it is we loved it already, but to lose it and to get it back, and that's also the city. We are all in Nashville now. Um, I didn't put my house up for sale. Did you put your house up for sale? No, no we're all way. Nashvilleians now, so I didn't hear anybody that did. So when we finally got to stay, and the other thing is that the people, other people we love that we don't get to talk about enough is the crew. That is a very Nashville, Tennessee-based crew, and they're our family now. And so to get to see the smile on their faces when we got to go back and they know they get to do more of this thing that they love and that we get to do it with them, they're the best crew in the world. They make our days uh, so much easier than they need to be because they're just so daggone good. So it was great for them, too. You could see the tears in their eyes, honestly, and, and feel their energy. It was it was nothing like I've ever felt in, I've done this for probably as long as you. Yeah. <laughs> 26 years, how long have you been here? I've done about 26 years. It's the difference is how old we were when we started. <laughs> well, the power of social media. Social media is good for this kind of stuff. Oh, I mean, yeah. those fans, you guys just saved a lot of jobs, a lot of happiness. Um, and I love that the whole team's back. I have the two crew. kids in college and a mortgage. So once again, thank you. <laughs> Um, and so I've got a two-year-old. She's going to go to college. 
She's eventually. gonna go. <laughs> she got me. So you guys have your families in Nashville, right? You guys live there permanently. Yeah. Um, what's it like being in Nashville and now that you're back? Uh, and, you know, this has reignited some sort of passion, I'm sure, about the show and being a part of it. Um, what's it like being in the city and staying there? And, and how does the show kind of relate to the actual Nashville that some of us have been to and some of us haven't? But. I'm reminded of that um, commercial a long time ago where it says you're soaking in it. You remember, I don't know if you remember that. I'm kind of old. But it was you're soaking in it. We are soaking in that city. And uh, we've said it again and again that the city isn't just the set for the show. It's a character in the show. The whole show is a love letter to Nashville. And that's true on a personal level, too. Um, each one of us has found our friends there and found our family fits in there very well. I have three kids that were in junior high and high school. And after the first season, you don't move your family the first season of any TV show. But in that second season, um, we knew as a family we had to be together. And I knew how great Nashville was. But I have to admit, I was a little hesitant. I was uprooting them and bringing them away from the home they knew in Los Angeles. But Nashville, like it always does, came through, and each one of them right now, they call Nashville their home, um, and they're, they feel like they're meant to be there as much as I ever was, and that city comes alongside of us, and, and that includes the artists and country music. They're all so kind. I mean, to a person, they have opened their arms to us. In the very beginning, I should say, they said, a lot of them said, don't make us look stupid. They were always saying that. They were nervous because they'd been shown before and, and maybe not in the best light or maybe and so they say don't make us look stupid they saw the show they realized we were not making them look stupid and not soon after the, or very soon after that they started saying all right now don't make us look so good because <laughs> they don't want <laughs> so many people moving there but that city was already booming and we just caught the wave oh yeah the traffic is <laughs> i live in green hills and the traffic now you have some Nashville neighbors. I feel the love, too, right? though. Who are your Nashville neighbors from the show you were pretty close to? Uh... Oh, my next door neighbors are Lennon and Maisie Stella. Ah, Moved right on in next door, and I mean literally Complete next door. Coincidence, too, right? I mean, I've asked them about their dogs family. once in a while. I'm like, uh, you got to the dogs the... outside here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she pulls a Juliet Barnes and says, She needs those dogs to. <laughs> Get out of there. Um, do, do people approach you kind of on the street and say that you're Deacon Claiborne or Julia Barnes and forget that you're actually not these country stars in real life? It depends on the street. <laughs> I mean, uh, sometimes it's been nice here um, in New York. A couple people, I mean, I'm, we're not, I'm not always sure in the, in the big city here if they're watching Nashville, but they sure are. Um, I mean, I stood under my billboard for 45 minutes and it took like... That's the truth. I wasn't going to bring it up. <laughs> But at, that's the honest truth. That is not. They the they couldn't. They were like, "Where's Chip?" This other show we were doing this morning, and I said, "Check his Twitter feed. He's probably standing under one of the billboards." Yeah. You've had him before, all right. Uh, that's my Aww. first. You know, but but honestly, where they call me Deacon, they call me Deacon uh, after 1 a.m. on Broadway in Nashville, right down on. What that are you Broadway. doing at 1 a.m. on Broadway? I'm honky tonking. <laughs> oh, the truth comes out. <laughs> Because when you guys go to these country music award shows and things, you know, towards the beginning of the first season or second season, I'd be like, these people have to be a little bit confused because it's like, there's Deacon Claiborne and Julia Barnes with the top hit on the charts. Oh, actually, you're not them. <laughs> you know, that was the, I felt like that was a really tough thing in the first season for me was people expected me to be just like Juliet. Mm -hmm. They, people, I would meet people and they would go, oh my gosh, you're actually not a... You know I spent what? a lot of time telling people <laughs> you weren't. I'm like, she's not exactly. Like, there's aspects, but she's Gosh. very, very different. She's, um, she's amazing. So she's and so is Juliet, deep. though. So, I mean, Juliet could not be Juliet without Hayden playing her. Yeah, that's for sure. Good. Nobody else could do that. And what a character uh, to take. Juliet Barnes is one of the strongest female characters we have on TV right now, especially when that character first graced the screen. You and Connie Britton, uh, what a duo. Uh, what has it been like for you to embrace Juliet and and all that she has to deal with on the show. Um, they've really given you some storylines to they sink have. your teeth into. They've put me through the ringer. Um, it's been really empowering as a woman. You know, I, I say she's kind of like a phoenix. Like, she, she crashes and burns hard, and then she rises from the ashes, and, and she is so resilient, and that's one of the things that I love the most about her, is she always chooses to take the lesson and to become stronger because of it. And she never... She doesn't seem to make the same mistake twice, but she seems to find 
every mistake she can make. <laughs> yeah, I constant, my character concentrates on two or three mistakes and keeps making them. She goes all over the place. But there's a lot that I always thought that um, Deacon and Juliet have in common. Um, a lot of things happen early on when they were young that shaped them and formed them. I mean, they're very different you in so many ways. But, but the, yeah, well, you're talking early episodes. <laughs> that's a whole different ball game. Um, there was a lot of. Um, that's what, man. I tell you what. Walking into the show and having these two amazing, like you said, there's some of the strongest female characters on television. There's Connie Britton. There's Hayden Panettiere, and uh, there's I'm I'm the piece of rope getting the tug of war in the middle there. Uh, it was. He's been it saying was, this since the first season. Yeah. He, that was Man, just people then. love you now. Well, it, it, things are better now. It was amazing right then, though, to walk in and just see you guys going at it. And, and I love, the, actually, the relationship between you, you two. The, the juliet Reyna relationship is really many-faceted, and, it's, and it never leaves completely what it was. There's always a touch of that. But then they're there for each other, but then they also know each other. And it's, it's really, really cool. Oh, I think Juliet has such a underlying respect for Raina and she just refuses to show it. Mm -hmm. She really does. Mm -hmm. And she just wants so much her to, to seek her approval. She seeks her approval and you just don't see that. She shows it in such a horrible, malicious way sometimes. She just doesn't know how to show that love because she was never shown how to love mm -hmm. in that way. But she, she's got a heart down there. And that's what I love about playing her, is that she has such extremes. And I don't think she could exist without it. And that's what makes her so human and so fun to play. I love playing bad, but I love playing those moments of good, too. Great way to describe it. And I love watching Juliet with Avery. Who doesn't? Because I'm so happy. I'm so happy you guys are... Jonathan Jackson is way. just Absolutely. incredible. He's such a force of nature. I, he, he makes me have to step up to the plate and improve my game because, I mean, the man could pull a tear at the drop of a hat. It's unbelievable. And, and it's all legit. It's all part of who he is, too. He's a very, very deep, soulful guy with all kinds of goodness and kindness. And he's very interesting, and he's, he has a band where he can rock your you know melt your face with that band and then he can be so tender and gentle and in, in these scenes he's he's a good person to have as a friend too i can say that oh he's the best kind of co-star the best so giving so giving emotionally you know you'd be surprised how many actors when the camera switches around and it's not on them they go to sleep <laughs> they're like why did you look at me uh, no reason I don't notice it. I, I'm unfortunately... No, my backing is fabulous. That, How's I'm yours? Much, my backing is better. I'm a much better actor when the camera's on the other person. Yeah. I suddenly, me too, absolutely. You should have seen me when the camera wasn't on me. You want to pull better. everything out of your co-star that you can. Yeah. Exactly. You're trying to and you're like, dang, couldn't you just like hide a camera yeah. over there? Did anyone get that? Did anyone see that? By the way, do you, not a lot of people know, some know, but Jonathan Jackson has, I think, five daytime Emmys. Yep. Um... Is he was lucky he on General Hospital, guys. That blows my mind. That's where I so fell humble. in love with him. The most humble. You never know it. He'd never tell you. No. No, no, no. I, I think I actually said that to him the other day. I was like, you have five <laughs> Emmys? And he was like. Yeah. yeah, that would become my middle name. I'd be, hi, I'm Charles Five Emmys. Uh, Aston, nice to meet you. And that is the truth. It. Uh, it's so good. I mean, this, the whole cast is is rock solid. I mean, Connie Britton, too, working with her in scenes. What a scene partner she must be. Uh, and we all know her, too, as Mrs. Coach Taylor, of course. So when she came and played Raina, it was just a totally different character. She's with Mrs. A little Deacon bit similar Claiborne right about now. Yeah. Woohoo! Finally! Yeah. Finally took you long took enough. You long oh, yeah, enough. I'm a little slow on the uptake. So what, what can we expect from Deacon and Raina's relationship? There's been so many ups and downs, but I feel like they're at a good place right now. You, you know what? Agree? Everybody's been saying for a long time that they deserve a little time in the sun because it's been up and down and sideways and every other thing. I don't, I'm not much for spoilers, but let me say that they get a little time in the sun and they get to be a husband and a wife and they get to support each other. In and the be sun or in the other. bed? <laughs> in or the both? Sun, in the sun bed. In the sun bed. No, uh, Perfect. In, in, in both. That's the thing is somebody was saying there's a lot of, you can see the, the underlying affection now perhaps more than ever. And I think one of the reasons that is is because it's safer. 
Um, all their fights before were kind of existential. Will they survive this dis- argument? Will they survive this discussion? Will they survive this d- event? There's something about that marriage when they say for better or worse. And yeah, we're both here. We're not going anywhere. I remember, my, I remember the first time when I was married, I went, oh, wait a second. We're married. This fight doesn't really matter. And tomorrow we're going to just be fine. And, 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 and there's something to that as well, where it's just we, Deacon Raina finally get to relax into that love a little bit. And it's nice. You guys have great chemistry. Let me say, I've seen the first two episodes, and let me tell you, you guys have fire between you and the sheets. Take the words out of my mouth. (laughs) Um, And let's talk a little bit about Juliet's journey, what's going to happen this season at least, you know, the plane crash. We do know she survives, and we're so happy that you're on the show. I'm alive! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But what what can you see for Juliet's journey this season? And Are things going to change in the way of you know, her career and her life and how she views things? You know, it's really hard when... It's really hard to give you guys the answer that you want without giving it all away. (laughs) But I will say, obviously you see that um, she goes through this accident, but it opens a door for her and she goes down a, a path that you would never expect her to go down. She explores a part of herself that is so un Juliet, um, but so powerful and so deep. Um, I think you guys are going to be really surprised, really excited. I think you're going to like it. I hope you're going to like it. Oh, they're going to love it. I hope you're going to love it. <laughs> I hope you're going to like it and love it. Like it and love it. And what it. can we expect from some of the other, you know, not everybody's back from the full cast, uh, but most of you are. Uh, and of course, we have Scarlett and Gunner. What's going to happen with them? Can you give us any, any tidbits? <laughs> We're like, BS, 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 me. BS, 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 me. BS, <laughs> <laughs> She'll fast forward right through my scenes. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, there, I, I think if they were both here, they would say that, that they're continuing. Uh, it's, it's hard to say because you're, I, I can't, get, I don't want to give away the story, but I know it's that. It's hard. They're, they're, it's funny, they've had problems in a different way than Deacon and Raina ever did. Um, there's a whole lot of trust issues back and forth with them. And they're both in a very glamorous business. This business we're in of country music, especially when they're exploding like the stars they are, that offers a lot of opportunities to be pulled apart. You're, you're flying through space, like interstellar, literally like in that movie. It's, it's hard to stay together. And I think uh, Claire's oh, journey, I, I've seen... Movies. What's that? Have you seen... The, the movie is incredible. I know. I, that's why I dropped that's its name. It. Yeah, it's a really good Evil. movie, right? If you haven't seen it, go see it. <laughs> Sorry, I had to... Nobody paid up. me to say that. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, uh, Claire would say that, uh, having played her uncle, I've, I've been sort of there for some of these things, and she gives me advice that doesn't work, and I give her advice that doesn't work. <laughs> right, it eventually works, um, but... Um, she's just trying to stand up for herself. Her journey in the business started off with her uh, basically hiding under a piano on stage because it all just came crashing down. Some of the characters sort of start very strong and are pushed through the hardest things in, in the world, and that's more Juliet's character. She was always just a force to be reckoned with. Um, Claire started with Scarlett as, as a little more um, like that and trying to find herself and trying to be able to sit in herself. And she's still on that exploration in, in, in very new and cool ways. All of these things, by the way, these characters are what is not new about the show. These characters are the characters you know and the characters you love. You're not going to go, wait, that's not Juliet. You're going to go, yeah, that's Juliet, but it's a new side of Juliet, a new perspective on Deacon that it maybe took a new writing team who came in and has done such amazing work on shows like 30-something and My So-Called Life and Once and Again. Marshall and Ed, they know how to write drama between humans, adults, um, and teens, clearly my so-called life. Um, so what it's, it's really nice at this point, and we're very grateful to the writers that have been there all along, but it's so cool to have people that come in and go, what about this angle? And you're like, oh, yeah. And plus we get to slow it all down and explore that. Yes, our scenes get to breathe a lot more, which is incredible to explore as actors because in those breaths and in those moments of silence is when you get to see the wheels turning and the decisions being made, and the hesitation, and you get to go through that journey much more with the characters. It also explores our ability to um, memorize a lot more. (laughs) 
I mean, thank God. I'm I'm so grateful for my um, training on. I was on soaps for eight years, and the other day I had a two-page monologue, and I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't had to memorize anything like this in years. I'm still the guy that gets to go. Yep. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> But she's right. The thing you said about the silence is that's everything. When you talk about chemistry, I think chemistry is found and proven in the silences. Uh, when Connie and I early work on the bridge or other things like that, there's just a moment where you stop talking and, and you're just looking at each other. I mean, she could tell you stories with a look. In real life, I mean, Hayden could just could shoot you a look. There was a whole scene in itself. I'm seeing a story right now, Charles. <laughs> Juliet is the same way. Juliet, uh, with just a look or just a silence, can say so much that it takes a lot of trust on, on the part of the writers to leave that space where they're not in that moment guiding the ship because they're just for a second going, if we let it breathe, that we can trust them. They know these characters to fill that with something that will say all we want to say. Um, and they're doing that. I've said it a couple times, but it just seems really true to me that it's like getting off of the highway and we love being on the highway and it's, it's exciting driving at those high speeds. But taking an exit and just, let's, let's take the back roads for a while. Let's try a little Route 66 action where you pull into a filling station just like Raina did. And you hear some old, deep roots country music just like Raina did. Uh, so that was a sort of a symbolic scene to open up this um, new, old season of Nashville. I know. You know what I loved about it? It felt like season one. It's back to its roots, which is about Nashville and music and relationships and not so much jumping around between a lot of different characters but really focusing on the characters and giving them the time you know to tell their own stories in scenes um and it does I, and have I really so much to do that. with with the trust though too especially coming in you know we have a, a large part of it in a new team you know and, and the writers and the and and Marshall and Ed and that takes so much trust not only on on their part but on our part and and collaboration and working together and I have to say you know it's really hard to jump in after five four years this is the fifth fifth year but and, meanwhile and right beside them and they've said you're right here with us because it's your vision is Callie Curry so that's oh, why Callie. you're you're smelling so much of that old familiar uh, scent and or, or those old you know things uh, she has always been the sort of true north of the show um, it's like when an airplane is flying from New York to LA it's never really pointing at the city it's going to it's always sort of correcting on its way like that and I always felt whenever Callie wrote an episode or whenever she directed an episode you could feel it sort of get even more, because these were her babies. Uh, she thought up not only the character Deacon, but the name, and that's a damn good name, that Deacon Claiborne. Absolutely, and I love that she always, she always finds the humor in it, like those, those, those comedic moments that are so poignant and so important. So important. I, I mean, I love those moments. I think that you get I so think many of the, the good ones. Cast... Well. You get such great lines. Like in the middle of something really dark, she'll say something and go, "Oh my God, did she? <laughs> Julia really say that? Those are the ones that kill me." And and uh, there, the, the whole writing team that was been these last four years, they wrote all those lines and they know how to write that for her. But Callie's always been one that can really, really make it sound like Deacon or really sound. And like she reminds you. Yeah. She had to remind me the other day to to bring back the comedy and I didn't even it didn't even cross my mind and we did this scene and you you would be so I'm constantly surprised at the talent of this cast and their ability to be funny too because this is such a drama sometimes and you would never expect it but you really they really uh, grab those moments of comedy and these actors are so funny I mean the looks on their faces uh, they're just the comic. I mean, you you came from comedy, so you know all about yeah. it. You're you're. But it, the, the thing that I always love about anyway? it. Whose line is it anyway? Whose line is it anyway? Did anyone? A little improvising, but I don't. We don't get to do much improvising. But they're oh, always open on. to a moment if you, you say do. something. I say. Come bit, on. A little bit. Um, no, but if there's a line yeah. if you think of and you try it on a run through, they might go, yeah. He used to come that? in with printed lines in the first season. He would, he, would, I, he would retype all of the dialogue, and he would come in with suggestions, and that it was, was the like, cutest thing, and he would come in and be like, that, You so know what, that was, that was one scene. You remember what that scene was about? One It was one thing I was just trying to make a point, is that Deacon and Juliet are in bed together. And it's the second episode, I think, uh, and it was like... Don't remind The original me. line was... Don't remind you. Don't was I, it bad? 
Yeah, is, that, is that still troublesome to You're people? You're not meant to be together. We have to, I, I, um, we have to remind each other I, once right. in a while. Um, in any event, uh, the line was something along the lines of, um, uh, I guess we're good at uh, something besides just writing songs together. Yeah. And I felt like in that moment, these are two messed up people that are in this bed for the wrong reasons, and they both know it. So what we ended up saying is she said, um, uh, what are you thinking about? And I said, oh, I'm wondering why this, how this keeps happening. <laughs> And she said, well, that's easy. It's, uh, it's because I'm irresistible. <laughs> and I said, I think that must be it. Yeah. And that, that seemed like the most true version in that moment. I just guess just being around her, whatever they wrote, they wrote before they really, they knew who the characters were, but you learn who the characters are also. And I just, in that moment, really felt strongly that it was our brokenness that brought us together in that moment. And they explored the heck out of that in ways I loved. That's what really kept us sharing back and forth was that, you know, we could help each other through these things. Um, and then I think Avery is a similar soda deacon in terms of being there for her. And so she, she found somebody that could be there for her all the time. And that's good. Two best guys. I, we have to go to the audience Q&A, but before that, we haven't even talked about the music. Isn't he good? I just want to do all my interviews right? with He's him. He's great. <laughs> I could just sit here and listen to him all day. I am rocking this interview. <laughs> you, are. you are. I'm just sitting back, relaxing, and trying to make sure my hair doesn't come over. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you were really rocking it, you would be and singing sure or performing for we, us. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. We got it. We need a, uh, another deep... We, we, Keep okay. going. No, no, no. <laughs> no this. Cut to him. Cut to him. <laughs> We need a, down the road, we, one thing uh, you can, if you guys can get the show brought back, uh, get another uh, Deacon and Juliet uh, duet somewhere down the line. We got to do another one of those. That would be fun. Undermine was if, a if, blast. If he had a guitar, man, it, 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 we could be on a street corner in front of a bus stop and you'd be like, you want to sing that song, Undermine? <laughs> I love you would. That song. I would sing that song. I, I think I got about three texts from you on the way that. here. I'm always like, want to sing? And she's like, I got a sore throat. <laughs> I have terrible stage fright. You can't put me out. <laughs> okay, well, we'll get it done. It'll I, happen. I've done it at the, the, you know the just... Ryman and the Opry. Oh, no, no. You've I, done I, it all. She's done 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 it all. all of this is that she's amazing. I remember we were doing one of the... Um, on the record concerts. Was it the one at the Ryman? Or the... Uh, no, yeah. it was... Yeah, the one at the Ryman yeah, yeah. was the first one. And... Look, Miller that, and everybody. Yeah, that's part of strength is to see somebody who's up there not super comfortable in that moment. It's the Ryman Auditorium, for, for God's sakes. This is the mother church of, you know, country music. And she has enough respect and intelligence to know that. And she, but so she, I see how nervous she is. And all I'm trying to do is say, you so got this. And, and she, she coached me. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Did you remember I did the first, the first, um, it was, it was, I can't remember what song it was, but I was standing there holding onto the mic with two hands and I was gripping it and, and Chip's pacing in front of the stage and going, stop, stop. Just, just, just move around, move around, move around. You got I, that's this. That's right. It was on a mic stand. I said, and I was like, no, no, no. Hayden Panettiere. You guys have all seen her on the show. Whenever she's, Ju hey, Julia, it's like, I thank you so I thank you so I said, then do you know how hard that is to do <laughs> in high heels yeah. in high heels and sing <laughs> well, you, i had to do i have the so funny, the juliet side here's, sidewalk here's, i did that you, pregnant down the that's stairs that's the side give me some like that, coming down like that and by the way that's the weirdest thing in the world to think in about sequence that. while mic'd i got two mic packs on it does it all I'm just, i gotta go 10 one i'm wearing this <laughs> i'm wearing the same boots and i can't do half of that um but apparently i can um <laughs> But the weird thing you is, should develop it. I think say, Deacon should develop the say, sidewalk. Ladies and gentlemen, Juliet Barnes, she'll come out and be like, da, da, and do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Hayden Panic here, and it's like, oh. It's so, isn't it interesting? Well, it's like when you, when you look at somebody, even like Beyonce, she developed Sasha Fierce for a reason because she needed an alter ego to go up there and to, to, you know, hide behind a little bit where where you don't have to show all of your raw yeah, edges, that. where you that. can go up there and put yourself out there in your mind as a different person, not just as yourself out there to be judged by everybody. Because you know, no matter what you do, there's always going to be somebody who doesn't like it. 
Well, the way I always, no matter what you do, and that always gets the best of me. Well, uh, for me, when I went to Nashville, I, I suddenly you quickly saw that we're going to be able to stand on stages like the Ryman and the Grand Ole Opry and sit in the Bluebird and play our music and play the show's music, and I knew that I was in over my head. You're jumping in the deep end, and I just made a decision that I'm not going to flirt around it like, oh, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm just going to make a binary decision to go say yes to everything they asked me to do. And then all I can do is my best. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But You're a guy. You guys can get away with so much more. Why is that? I, they that's can. a whole other story, know. guys. That's a whole but other story. But they can. Story. It could be because I feel of like alter ego Deacon Fierce. Um, Deacon, Deacon Fierce. Deacon Fierce. It's just up in here. Nobody else knows that. Time. All right. We, we only have time for about two audience questions. So does anyone have anything? Oh, my goodness. Right here. Hey, guys. Thank you for being here. Hi. Hey, hey, hello. Um, congrats on coming back to life. It's very exciting. <laughs> thank um, you. You don't hear that question a lot, but thank yeah. you. Excellent right. question. Fierce, back to life. Back to life. Um, over the course of the series, uh, have there been any um, guest stars that you've gotten to work with that, you've, that have stood out to you and you've enjoyed? I got to work with Steven Tyler. That was cool. I got to record one of my favorite songs in the world with him, Crazy. And he actually told me later that he played it for Willie Nelson, who wrote that song. And I was like, Willie Nelson's heard my voice! <laughs> oh my god, I almost passed out right there. That was it. I can die a happy woman. Um, that wins. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, I've been, I've been able to... One of my favorites is actually Mark Colley, who's been a country artist in his own right. And he and I are friends. Um, he did uh, Even the Man on the Moon is Crying. And I was a fan. I actually met him years ago at a Tanya Tucker concert. He was, uh, he was opening for her. All these years later, we kept bumping into each other, and we ended up writing together. And as we're writing together, I get this tweet that they're looking for this character of Frankie. And it's a guy that is playing Deacon's uh, sponsor in AA, and he's been through the whole addiction thing, and he's been through the whole artist thing, and he's just a couple years older than Deacon with just a few more lines and a few more miles on him. And I'm sitting there with this guy, and I'm like, Hold on a second. I get up, I go, the guy's sitting right across from me. I'm writing a song with him. He's Mark Colley. He's acted before. So anyway, I, I, he got in, and he went in the next day, and he got that damn role, and he wow. played Frankie. And getting to work with Mark and to do those scenes was a real joy. And um, he's a real buddy by now. We've written like five, six different songs together, including, oh, this is called a segue, uh, <laughs> including the song I'm releasing today, which is called Buckle Up. Yeah. What's it called? Hey, Buckle up, Mr. Mark Colley, and um, uh, I, I love that guy. What about Elton John? Is he, is he, oh, I, I walked there. in. I, oh. I, I could not believe that Sam got to record with, uh, and play with right. him. I was like, Christina Aguilera. Yeah. Christina Aguilera yeah. I got to work with, which that was one of the, the cool characters that she got to come on and not just play herself. She played a character, and yeah, I got exactly. to tell her off. <laughs> And then she, she came and helped me out on a lip sync battle. And yep. Will Chase got to sing with Sarah Evans, a, great, a duet. Oh, and, um, love her. And he, um, Vince Gill has been there from the very beginning. Vince Gill is like the honorary mayor of Nashville. You won't find a bigger heart. You will not find a better voice or a better guitar player. I saw him for the first time at, um, the first time I ever heard him was Bluebird Cafe. Oh, man. I Unbelievable. I yeah, he's, if you guys ever come to Nashville... You must go to Bluebird Cafe. Yes. It is and, unbelievable and probably, going there and listening to the writers You should probably get your reservations before you even plan your yeah. trip. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. It, it, yeah, but or you'll get in. Keep bust a move, throw anyway, an elbow. I can't even imagine seeing Vince there. He's like... Go in the back door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, these two, they're like Nashville tourism. They're here for Nashville tourism as well as their voice coach and casting directors. And you guys, we are so happy that Nashville is back for real. If you guys, are, too. If you guys are happy, you, you better guys. watch the show tonight. It Thank premieres you so much. at 9 p.m. on CMT. So make sure to watch it. Thank you guys for being here.